Hey there, how you doing? I'm going to do a little video explanation today of um, muscle function. I got a lot of requests from my last video about Clark. Clark, come here. We're gonna, so we're going we're gonna to put him in the video a little bit. Right, boy? That's Clark over here. He's my golden doodle. He's almost three, but um, he's very rambunctious, as you'll see. So as I said, we're going to talk about muscle function. So um, it's, it's really nice outside, a little breezy. So let's take it outside, and um, we'll have a little talk about muscle function today and how muscle function can lead to subluxation is actually the primary cause of subluxation. All right, so let's take it outside. OK, here we are. We're outside, and what we're going to talk about is muscle function and muscle in general. Muscle is very important because of what makes us move. Muscle is attached to bone, and when muscle contracts, it moves the bone. So for instance, you have your bicep muscle right here. It attaches at your upper, upper bone here of your humerus and down into your forearm bones, your radius and your ulna. When your bicep contracts, it pulls your forearm up, right? So when your bicep contracts, it pulls your forearm up like that. So muscle is responsible for movement. All these muscles, the same muscles that move my arm, are in our back and in our, our spine, all right? Our neck and our upper back and our lower back, and they attach from bone to bone. And when those muscles contract, that's how we move. That's how we bend our neck. That's how we bend our back. So muscle is extremely important for movement. What you have to realize, though, is the states of different muscle contraction. All right, that's what's important. All right, we have mu we're gonna use this rope as an analogy and we're going to say that this rope is a muscle, and when the muscle is like this, it's loose. It's not contracting. All right, it's in a st it's in a state of um, hypotonic. All right, tonic would be steady, hypo would be less than steady, and then hypertonic would be extremely taut. So if we're dealing with a contraction, we're basically talking about um, muscle tone no muscle tone, all right, muscle tone. And then when we get an extreme contraction, when the muscle goes, um, say you wanna, I'm gonna flex my bicep really hard, and we get an extreme contraction, or we go into a muscle spasm, all right? So a muscle spasm would be like, ba-bam, all right, ba-bam. So when we have muscle spasms or hard muscle contractions, that's where we get a problem as far as the spine goes. And this could be a major cause in subluxation. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to put this bucket on the table. And we're going to take this rope. And we're going to um, just sort of tie it around. I lost my knot. So we're going we're gonna to go through and do my little boating fisherman knot. Sort of like a slip knot there. There we go. Not the kind that you do that with, but more of a kind of a fishing boating knot. All right, so I'm going to take it around this bucket like this, and we're just going to pull the slip knot. And again, to demonstrate and reiterate what we're talking about, we have hypotonicity, which means less than normal, less than steady. We have tonic or tone which is the normal state of muscle. And then we have contraction, is when the muscle starts to overly, overly force its muscle, muscle fibers to squeeze, and the contraction, like that, it pulls, it gets taut. All right, so we can contract normally, like I flexed my bicep muscle, or we can have the muscle go into a spasm. So watch what happens when it goes into a spasm. All right, it yanks the bucket. The muscle, the rope is yanking the bucket. So if your muscle was in a spasm, for instance, in your back or your neck, it's going to, it's going to yank on your spinal bone, and it's going to cause a pull or a shift in the spinal bone. That pull or a shift causes the misalignment, which we call the subluxation. So once that muscle contraction is overt, which it's too strong and too steady, we're going to get a pull and it's gonna shift the spine out of alignment. Now what causes 
overly contracted muscle in the back or in the neck. It could come from uh, repetitive movements that you do constantly. It could come from an accident where you, you slip or a fall, or it come from a strain. I go to lift something heavy in a bad position and I, and I cause my muscle to pull. All those types of things leads to, leads to contraction of spinal muscles that are above normal, and then that can cause subluxation. So what I did is I just explained to you how muscles cause subluxation. All right, so muscle function in that regard, it's about contraction and over contraction. All right, so we want to make sure that, um, you know, life, lifestyle is lifestyle. It's the way it is. You're going to live the way you live. And you people sit certain ways, they stand certain ways, they have certain activities that are unique to them, and they're going to overuse those muscles and they're going to cause muscle contraction. And then there's also things that are out of your control, all right? Your little, your sports injuries, your exercise and your working out, your gardening, um, your slips and your falls, your chores, anything that is a, that can cause a little sudden jerk in your muscle is gonna cause a problem and a subluxation. So the important thing you have to realize is that the subluxation is an abnormal condition that exists normally. We all are going to do things with our muscles, so therefore we're all going to get subluxations. So what the chiropractor basically is doing is when people come to his office, yeah, he's fixing their problems, but when their problems are already fixed, then you use chiropractic as damage control, as or what we call lifestyle control. You're going to keep doing the things you do, and you're going to keep involving the muscles that you have, and eventually they're going to cause subluxations. But if you're going to the chiropractor on a regular basis, we're always balancing the musculature, which is keeping it from coming a big problem. All right, you don't want to have a huge subluxation just appear, and then you're you're out of commission for a while. So by doing damage control, or what we call maintenance care, preventative care, then you're on top of it, and that's how um, and that's how we help your muscles stay healthy, and which helps your spine stay aligned. All right. So that's my explanation for today. I hope you enjoyed that. It's a beautiful day today. Um, naturally, we could be watching this video any other time when it's not beautiful, but know that I made it when it was a beautiful day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.